Governor Pat McCrory is visiting the Heritage Foundation to talk about the reforms that he's spearheading in North Carolina. Governor, thanks for joining us today. It's great being here in Washington. Look forward to getting back home to North Carolina later on this evening. Now, Governor, uh, you're the first Republican governor in North Carolina in 20 years. And the last time that Republicans held both the executive and legislature was 1870. So what have these last 10 months been like? Dynamic change, because we knew we had to step on the toes of the status quo of both Republicans and Democrats, but mainly Democrats who've been in charge for such a long period of time. There was kind of a good old boy system and a good old girl system running the operations of state government, and we needed very strong reform. You've said that there have been more reforms in North Carolina this year under your leadership than there have been in decades. So what are some of the highlights? Well, one thing was tax reform. We had a tax system that hadn't been changed in the last 60 years, and we weren't competitive with the rest of the nation, the rest of the world, or even our neighboring states in Tennessee, Virginia, and South Carolina, good Republican governors. And I knew if we were going to compete for jobs, we needed major tax reform. And we lowered the income tax and the corporate tax rate to recruit and retain businesses in North Carolina and become more business friendly. That was major reform enacted within a very short period of time. We had transportation reform. We changed a formula that had been around since 1988, which was really based upon more politics than where you build the roads, where the people are, and where there's actual congestion and where we need new economic development. Major transportation reform. We had civil service reform. We had a state personnel act, which really made it impossible to promote good employees and actually fire employees that weren't contributing to what we needed to have done. And uh, we've made some tremendous progress there. So uh, three major reforms and many other reforms that are coming to help rebuild in North Carolina to have a Carolina comeback, especially with regard to jobs. Now, given the success you've had, you've come to Washington at a time when it seems that gridlock and the partisan divide is as great as it's ever been. So what message do you have for lawmakers here in Washington? Lead. Don't worry about the surveys. Lead. Um, and be ready to step on some toes. And that's what I've had to do in North Carolina. I've taken some hits for it. But if you're going to be an executive, you've got to lead and present your proposals. And then work out the differences. <coughs> and. Um, and think about the future. Make sure your solutions just aren't for the next month, but are for the next decade. And that's exactly what we're attempting to do. We're thinking not just in one-year political cycles or four-year political cycles. We're looking at decades and even, even generational change, because that's what we have to do if we're going to be competitive in this very competitive world. North Carolina was the only state to support President Obama in 2008 and then back his opponent in 2012. So what model can conservatives and other interested citizens who care about these issues uh, take away from what you're doing? Well, enjoy your job, be a problem solver, and be a visionary. And I think that's what we as conservatives, like Reagan did, like Eisenhower did. They showed what the future will be like if we enact new, aggressive, uh, systematic policy. And then we also have to say, if we do not implement this, what's the alternative and what would the what would happen if we don't do this? We've got to show a vision for the future. And that's what I'm attempting to do in North Carolina. But in doing so, you've got to step on some toes. And I'm willing to do just that. Great. Governor, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good to be here.